Welcome to Super Enthused. My name is Jackie and today I'm in the Florida Everglades. Today I'm starting at the Royal Palm Visitor Center. From this center you can visit the Aninga Trail. Aninga Trail is very popular with locals and tourists alike and one of the biggest attractions of this trail are the alligators and birds. I've made the hour hike from Miami to the Everglades and I renewed my Florida Everglades annual pass and I'm here to walk some trails. No bicycles, no food or drink, no pets, and for goodness sake, no smoking. The visitor center has restroom facilities, you can purchase water and beverages, and I believe there are some snacks. We'll take a look inside a little later. So there are a few different trails from this visitor center, but we're going to start with the biggest attraction, the Aninga Trail. So let's start. Aninga Trail. And it's important to have the proper etiquette in a national park. Respect wildlife. Observe from a distance. Do not feed or harass the animals. Keep about a 15 foot distance from alligators. First gator spotting of the trail. Let's get a little closer. It has a baby alligator on its head and another little baby alligator swimming next to it right next to its head. So possibly more baby alligators are around. That is beautiful. What a great first sighting. See the baby alligator right there and then the baby alligator on the alligator's head. It's crawling. The second baby alligator is crawling up on its mother, I assume's head. They're safe on mommy's head. How cool is that? There's quite a crowd of people watching because it's so beautiful. Looks like we have some gray clouds rolling in. They're quite beautiful. But then on the other side of the sky, it's all bright and blue. The Everglades is known as a river of grass because it sits on water and you see all the grass out there. You can't walk on that. If you were to try to walk on that, you would just sink right into the water. The name river of grass comes from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's book written in 1947, drawing attention to the Everglades and what needs to be done to preserve this place. Preserving the Everglades isn't just about preserving beautiful nature. The Everglades sustains and supports life all throughout Florida. It also protects us from hurricanes and protects our water supply. It's not incredibly crowded today, but there are people, a lot of people walking around, which is nice. The more people I see enjoying the Everglades, the happier I am. We've reached the point in the trail where the paved pathway turns into a boardwalk over the water. It gets really pretty here and people love to stop and take photos and enjoy the scenic views on both sides of the boardwalk. So we're gonna go ahead and take a little boardwalk walk. There are scenic overlooks that break off from the main boardwalk trail where you can sort of separate from the crowd Often families will break off onto these areas to take family photos with a lovely backdrop. I know I've got the, the tall trees and grass over here, but at different times of the year, this looks different. Just now, a little bit ago, there was a family here taking some family photos with the Everglades backdrop, and it was really pretty. I could tell. I could just tell. Right now, I finally have this little overlook to myself. I had to wait a little bit for a few families to take their photos and clear out and now I've got it to myself so <sighs> it's a nice zen moment really really nice now that we've had a lovely moment of zen having this scenic overlook to ourselves let's keep going along the trail and see what else we can see oh this is wonderful we've got a bit of the boardwalk to ourselves there are a lot of people behind us you can probably hear them talking it's nice when you can get here really early in the morning. It's a lot more quiet. I think all the people talking and walking around kind of scare some of the wildlife away, and that's normal. It's still beautiful, it's still lovely and wonderful, 
I found another quiet moment where all the tourists have walked by on one side and on the other. I can hear more coming. This water is infested with gators, but they're hiding, and this vegetation is the perfect hiding place. There could be one sitting right there, and we probably wouldn't see it. The best way to identify them is by the ridges. Oh, I see something over there. I don't know what it is. Something's moving. There's all sorts of little ripples. Some of it is just the leaves blowing in the wind. Some of it is birds, fish, other animals. I pronounced it slough earlier, but it's pronounced slough. The slough is a slow moving channel of water flowing through the sawgrass prairie. It supports a myriad of life from small microorganisms beneath the water surface to the wading birds and alligators that grace its banks. Each is a part of a natural food web, making it possible for each species to survive. I usually see Aninga, the birds that the trail is named after, right at the entrance of the trail, but I didn't today. You'll sometimes see Florida red-bellied turtles. The Aninga is called a snake bird. It's Spears fish on its bill and it looks like a snake. American Coots, the non-poisonous brown water snake, looks like a cottonmouth moccasin, but it is not. We've got all sorts of fish, tilapia, largemouth bass, gar. There are otters here. I've never seen an otter here. I've seen otters in other places, but I've never seen an otter at an Inga Trail. It says occasionally seen. I would love to see an otter, that would be awesome. Pig frog, the Florida cottonmouth, that is poisonous. It's one of the four poisonous snakes found in the Everglades. I've never seen one out here, thankfully. Pied-billed grebe, purple gallinule, I've seen those plenty. The green-backed heron, I've seen a lot of herons. American alligator, we've seen those. Raccoons, see those everywhere. And the great blue heron. Hopefully we see something, if not, at least we See him here, right? The tall grass blowing in the breeze really adds to the peaceful feel out here. We have a sunbathing bird. Is it an Aninga? It does look like one. That's a gar right there. Oh, it's so still, right? It holds still like a stick. I don't know if you can see it in my picture, but there's a gar down there holding very, very still. He's very blended in. But you can see his kind of mottled coloring. There are benches scattered throughout where you can just take it easy and take it all in. Look how tall the grass is here. It's taller than me. Let's go this way. It looks empty over here. Paradise Key Hammock. To the west and observe how elevation changes of only inches influence the sawgrass prairie, slough, and hardwood hammock. Paradise Key, sometimes called Royal Palm Hammock for its towering palms. It's over there. Stands larger and higher than most Everglades hammocks. The Florida Federation of Women's Clubs preserved and dedicated the area as Royal Palm State Park in 1916. Royal Palm Lodge once stood in Paradise Key, where early visitors grew to appreciate this subtle subtropical environment. The lodge building was moved to Homestead in 1954. This is Paradise Key. It's an island of sorts of hardwood surrounded by the slow-moving river of Taylor Slough. And so that's it right there. You see the difference of elevation right there from the river of grass out here to Paradise Key Hammock. Wow, look at those clouds rolling in. It feels amazing. It's November, but it feels like summer, weirdly. It feels kind of surreal. It's really beautiful. Got it growing in my canal. The purple flowers? Mm -hmm. Pickerel weed. Yeah, oh. Fish. Pickerel. oh, cool. Thank you. There you go. That beautiful purple flower is pickerel weed. Another beautiful sunning aninga. He doesn't seem to mind all the tourists admiring him. Get that sun, buddy. Get that sun. He's looking around. He's like, what do you got for me, people? 
We've got another Aninga sunning in the branches. Looks like it's their sunning hour. They're so lovely. And they're the namesake of this trail. Enjoy your sun, my friend. the entrance and this is the same gator we saw as we were coming in but it's a little more out of the water and a little more visible it's still got one baby on its head and the other baby is probably close at hand oh there's several babies yeah they're kind of all around earlier there were two babies on its head it's just chilling Just taking it easy, soaking in the sun. And there's another nice bass down there swimming by. Now that we've walked the Aninga Trail, let's take a little stroll on the Gumbo Limbo Trail. The Gumbo Limbo Trail is a tropical hardwood hammock. Very different from the slough we just walked through. Well, I can definitely say it's quite a bit cooler on the Gumbo Limbo Trail than it was on the Aninga Trail. Firstly, there's shade here. There's a bit of a canopy. There are a lot of trees. It's very quiet, very peaceful. The trees are a natural buffer to all the sounds of the tourists and the noise of the more crowded trail, but they also provide a cooling relief from the blazing Florida sun. You walk along a cracked paved pathway that winds around with dappled light from the canopy that is sometimes present and sometimes not. Forests like this exist only in Southern Florida. They can survive here because of the tropical conditions found here. So according to this plaque here, about 70% of the approximately 700 native plant species of Everglades National Park are of tropical origin because of the unique climate of South Florida. Papayas. There's birds squawking and little kids squawking back at them. <laughs> People have etched their initials and notes, love letters to each other, and all sorts of modern hieroglyphics into this tree. Thank you guys for joining me for another Florida nature adventure. The Florida Everglades is a huge, expansive park. This is such a tiny, tiny piece of it. There's Shark Valley, there's the Flamingo Camping Loop. There are so many areas to the Everglades that are all so incredibly different. So I hope you enjoyed this moment of zen in the Florida Everglades. The idea of today's video was just to kind of wet your feet with some of the easier to get to, kind of beginner trails that are easy to visit and access in the Florida Everglades where you can enjoy this beautiful, unique national park. I definitely recommend if you live in the area and you haven't been down for a while, come on out, tis the season. And if you're a visitor to South Florida, you have to make time to visit the Everglades, especially if you're trying to visit national parks. Also, besides bringing you all out to the Everglades with me and showing you a place that's near and dear to my heart and just sort of starting our adventure of hopefully many videos to come of the different parts of the Everglades. I also wanted to escape Black Friday today. I could have just stayed home and relaxed, which is a perfectly legitimate option, but that's just not how I roll. I love to be out in nature as much as possible, especially on a day when everything is cray cray. Black Friday is a day when there's all these deals going on and everyone's shopping and all the stores are just 
bonkers, so I avoid them. But avoiding them is one thing, but actually getting out of the city is another. I wanted to completely get out of the city. Now there are a lot of tourists and a lot of other people out here enjoying nature with me, but that doesn't take away from the peace, quiet, and beauty of being in the Everglades on Green Friday. And with that, I bid you adieu. I thank you for joining me. Stick around, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've got those notifications turned on. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, and I look forward to sharing lots of future adventures with you, from beautiful national parks, to theme parks, to weird stuff all over Florida and beyond. Hey, if you missed my summer Nova Scotia trip, there's a playlist up on my channel. I do travel outside Florida, and I have plenty of travel coming up. So make sure you join me. Let me know your thoughts. I love to hear from you guys and interact with you. Thank you again. I appreciate you so much. And until the next adventure, you know what to do. Stay enthused.